Erev Tov, Chabrini, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we are going to be looking at two different stories tonight. One is dealing with the martial law in Brussels, uh, as well as a, a, a terrorist attack in Jerusalem there near the light rail system there where two uh, where a 70-year-old man was stabbed by Israeli or by a Palestinian terrorist, and both of the terrorists were shot. One killed, one uh, wounded. We'll be going into that in just a moment here. But let's first, let's go to Brussels. Uh, this is a very serious situation in Brussels. You see this on your screen here in the background here. I've got several different images here uh, uh, of things that are going on, and I'd like to... Uh, uh, let me just kind of bring that down just a little bit, not too much, just a tiny bit. Well, I'm not getting it the way I want to there, but anyway, the um, <clears throat> I've had several pictures shared with me about the, the situation there in Brussels, and it is far more serious than what people realize. Uh, it, we understand that it has been also told to the citizens in Brussels that they are not to be sharing on uh, social media uh, things that are going on in the country of uh, Belgium. This is where Brussels is. And uh, that's uh, to, to very alarming to say the least. There are troops all over the streets there. Uh, it is said by the uh, president of, uh, of, <clears throat> of this country here that they are expecting an imminent threat, uh, to say the least there. They are expecting an imminent threat there. They have tangible threats. It is at the highest level it can possibly be there, telling the people not to go out, not to travel. Uh, we've also heard reports there have been uh, multiple people arrested already. Whether or not these are terrorist suspects or not, or whether or not it's actually citizens concerned about uh, the martial law, the lockdown of Brussels. But what's really concerning to me is that they don't want it made public, what's going on. You're not hearing about it in Western media from what some sources have shared with me thus far. I've been told that it's a very quiet, very hush-hush thing in America, that one person that wrote that watches Israeli News Live, he went back, he checked Western media sources, could find nothing on Brussels being under martial law. Uh, I'm sure that there's been some news about the uh, the threats that they have faced as a country, but there again, as I've said, stated many times before, the reason why we have threats in Europe of uh, of all the terrorism is because it has been created uh, first by the United States and then again by the countries such as Germany, uh, Britain, uh, France, uh, Belgium, many other countries that have allowed all these terrorists to migrate into the Europe, as well as now they're being. Uh, just boated into America. Uh, Obama has already uh, permitted about two to three hundred thousand to be brought into the United States between this year and next year. Uh, of course, they have paid the Vatican nearly eighty million dollars. <throat> that is on the uh, Vatican's tax return for 2014. Uh, the U.S. Catholic Churches has been given eighty million dollars to take care of all the Syrian refugees that are being brought into the United States for caring for all the refugees from around the world. So the, the Vatican, certainly the Pope is out there uh, parading all of this information, saying, sure, uh, we should care for these people that are coming in. They have lives. They have problems. Uh, they, they're looking for a better life, as he calls it. You know, I can understand some of the Mexican people that cross the border. Yes, they are looking for a better way of life. But when you're bringing in men by the tens of thousands that are fighting ages uh, and, and, and they're not coming in as a family. You know, I've seen Syrian families coming in that are just trying to escape the carnage of war of Syria. That's one thing. I can't have some compassion when it comes to this, but when it comes to the just boating in uh, men and droves out of Syria and out of all these other uh, nations that are war-torn, only to bring them here to start wars in Europe and the United States and elsewhere, this is getting completely out of hand. And it is a situation that is created by our, by our own uh, ignorance of the government, I should say, because most Americans would never stand, stand still for this, neither would Europeans for that matter. Uh, but there are some that are just blinded, especially from Germany after what happened to the Jewish people during World War II, which my family being many of those Jewish people that were murdered during the concentration camp. So I do understand uh, about situations like this, but clearly uh, there has to be a line drawn in how you handle bringing in refugees or even allowing them to come in. These, the people from the Middle East there 
should be more brought into the countries of Middle East origin that understand their own belief systems and values, not to come into Europe and to the United States to change the, the belief systems that these countries have, such as the U.S. Uh, being more predominantly a Christian nation as well as the Europe being a predominantly Christian nation, uh, to come in there and then now start Sharia law, etc., things of this nature here that are not of the values of these people in the first place. Very, very disheartening, very alarming news that we're seeing coming out of Brussels there. Uh, you can see in the photo here uh, at the bottom of the screen there, the streets, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, uh, I can see six armored vehicle, uh, uh, military trucks, personnel trucks, uh, armored vehicle. They're in the streets there of, uh, of Brussels there. Very sad. Uh, pray for the people there. We have brothers, sisters there that do need our prayers. Uh, the banks are closed. I, I, like I've said before in the broadcast yesterday, I am concerned that this may only be a test run for the New World Order system, how they can uh, corral the people into the places they want, close everything down, close the banks, etc., and eventually it'll just go on a much larger scale. Very disheartening to say the least. Uh, going into another story, <clears throat> this story here is really upset me tremendously. Um, this here is, uh, says, watch Arab girls stalk for Jewish victims in Jerusalem. Well, that's actually, I'm sorry, that is a different story there. Let me take you to the one before that. Um, and this is where <clears throat> the stabbing of the Mahan Yehuda market. This was near the light rail system here. There's footage shows harrowing moments as two female terrorists go on the attack before being shot by security guards. Now, <clears throat> I understand that Israel is under attack by the Palestinian, especially the PLO, uh, who is inciting the violence. The Vatican is inciting the violence with their own, um, their own bishops that have actually stated, and let me pull this up because I don't want to, I've said this several times before, we have sh shown this before, so it's important that you see this. Uh, bishops, uh, there will be no peace in Jerusalem, okay? So I want to bring this up for your attention so you can see, see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, let me just... <clears throat> this is an older article right here, but this is one of the examples that I'm speaking about. Expose. The Vatican wants to lay its hands on Jerusalem. This is by Giulio Meotti. I know Giulio personally. Uh, Giulio we've had here on Israeli News Live before. It says the Vatican is now reiterating demands for control of the religious sites. This article, though, is from 2011, but there has been another one that aired out recently. Uh, I just cannot get my hands on that right at hand. But let me just show you what Giulio says in here. He quotes here, Peace negotiations in the Middle East must tackle the issue of the status of uh, the holy sites of Jerusalem. Cardinal Jean-Louis Toran head of the Vatican's Council of Interreligious Dialogue, declared several days ago in Rome, the Vatican's foreign minister asked to place some Israeli holy places under Vatican authority, alluding to the cynical on Mount Zion in the Garden of Gethsemane at the foot of the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. <clears throat> he states down here in the fourth paragraph, there will be no peace if the question of the holy sites is not adequately resolved, Turan said. Turan is the Cardinal Jean-Louis Turan, head of the Vatican's Council of Interreligious Dialogue, states there will be no peace if the question of the holy sites is not adequately resolved. The part of Jerusalem within the walls with the holy sites of the three religions and humanity's heritage. That is outright condoning violence against the Jews. What they want is full sovereignty over these sites. Now, I bring this up because my point is, and what I'm going to share with you, is that the Palestinian Liber uh, Liberation Organization, as they're called, the PLO, the uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, has been encouraging the violence against the Jewish people. I, for one, am not for a two-state solution, period. I think the Prime Minister should stand his ground on this and should not give in, not one single moment. In fact, we even stood with him when he had vowed in his, uh, in his run for the Prime Minister that he would not permit that. But he did it anyway. Not to say that he hasn't actually 
voted for the two-state solution. We see that it's already become a two-state solution once the Vatican declared them as two states. To us, it was already two states. But the point that I'm making here today is I am in solidarity with Israel and her right to a single state, but at the same time, we must, those Palestinians that would want to live in peace along with the Jewish people, we must, according to the Torah, accept them as a brother and as a sister not as some lower life, not as someone that, is, that has no dignity, but to accept them in this way here. But those who are inciting the violence, it is much like John Stockwell, the former director of the CIA of the United States, says that the U.S. government goes in and overthrows democracies by inciting violence among the minority radicals. This is what's happening in Israel. The United States who is the military wing of the Vatican, is not satisfied until the Vatican get what's, gets what it wants. And that's the sovereignty of Jerusalem. They want everything inside those walls of the old city to be theirs. And so they're using the U.S., the CIA, etc., the Mossad possibly, to go in and incite violence amongst the PLO, amongst the Palestinians, amongst the youth there, to come in and incite violence to try to get Israel to buckle under the pressure for their demands to be met. And what's sad is the Palestinian Authority is actually taking children now to do their attacks. They're allowing their children to do it. Do you know why they're allowing it? They want Israelis to gun them down in the streets. They want world sympathy in doing this. I understand that Israel is under a state of an emergency with the Third Intifada. I know firsthand, I'm a former police officer. I also was in Israel in 2004 at French Hill. I was there by God's mercy and grace who spoke to me and directed me out of the path of a suicide bomber, a girl only 18 years old that blew herself up. And even though he directed me out of the path, I nearly was not completely off my feet from the blast itself just from the concussion of the bomb. I was still that close to the girl. So I can understand as a personal level what it's like to live under the terrorist attacks. I know what it's like for me afterwards. Every bomb, every click, every boom sound. You're wondering, is it happening again? I do understand. In the latest Intifada, instead of being suicide bombings, there, of course there have been flat out gunnings and assassinations by Palestinian terrorists that have gunned down innocent families in front of their children. And I know this has got the Jewish people on edge. And I know that when a person has a knife in their hands, it is a deadly situation. Like in the case of one bus stop where a, a man that worked for Bizic, he takes his car, rams into two people, crushes them. I believe two or three people actually died as a result of what he does. He jumps out of his car. He begins to stab more and more people, as many as he could, as fast as he could. One security guard that was there, he shot him once, he drops. He waits. The man gets back up again, he shoots him again. He's still armed, he's still trying to stab more victims. I understand this. I don't like the lie of any life being taken. I'll, I'll say this, I am not for the taking of life. I do believe the commandment of the Torah that God gave Moses, thou shalt not kill. But as a believer in Yeshua, I'm also for what Yeshua said, you have heard it said of them of old times, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say unto you, if you want your coat, give him your cloak also. You know, the first murder ever committed in the, in the word of God was by Cain killing his brother Abel. And God suffered, would not suffer anyone to kill this man for what he did. That's the restoration of God's word. If we are able, as a Jewish people, and you can take these people down, Men, I realize, a little bit harder because of the violence. But when you have children involved, when you have young girls, like in the case of what I'm about to share with you, two teenage girls, one 14, one 16 years old. They did. They stabbed the 70-year-old man. They were looking for someone that is actually um, 
vulnerable. There is one part in their video, though, I wonder if even if the Israeli authorities noticed when they were looking at where they were watching the footage of where they're going, and they turn around and they go back. There's one Arabic man that shows up in the video, just barely catch, captures him. And I, I have really had a strange suspicion that the man may have been part of it, trying to get him to go back and finish what they were supposed to do, what they've been brainwashed into doing. When the security guard comes in, he does shoot both girls, okay? I'm going to show you the video. First, I'll have you watch it in the background as you're watching it here. You can see the girl threatening the guy. He's got a gun. The security guard comes in. He shoots. Both girls are actually shot by him. Okay? They're both shot by him. Now, the part that is very concerning to me, though, they're both teenagers. We realize that. But they are both trying to kill people. I do understand that. But I want to back it up and I want to show you something. By the way, one of the girls was killed. The other one is seriously, is seriously wounded. I want to go slowly. In the top of the screen right there, the elder of the two, the one, and I'm assuming elder because she's a little bit bigger girl, 16 there, she's coming, she's wielding her, I think it's scissors is what they were using in their attack. She comes after the elderly man that's approaching. The other one's not far behind her, looking for, for another victim to stab as well. All right, the security guy comes along, he sees it, he jumps out, he comes. The, the second girl now at the top of your screen, I've paused it again, in the middle of your screen, the one girl with the white top on, both the girls have white tops on, look like blue coats or, or blue sweaters, whatever they're wearing there. Look like schoolgirls, it says in one place there. Both these men to the left are armed. The one larger girl is, is actually shot second by a security guard. Let me just show you. He, he first aims over at the other one at the further distance. She's not around anyone as of yet. He will shoot her once. And it looks like she's maybe shot in the leg because she reaches down or she could have been shot in the stomach. I have no idea. All right. The other girl still is chasing after the one guy there. Then there's a man that comes along and rams the girl down, the youngest one, with a chair. She's down at that point. She's totally down. As a former police officer, once the person is down, you have control of the situation. She does not get back up, okay? The other girl, the second girl, she runs, she's been shot already, and I think it's the elderly man that shot her first before the other security guard comes in. Now, as you notice, as he's walking closer to her, he is firing one round after another, after another, after another. I would say five rounds from what it looks like, because you can actually see in the video footage as I'm looking at it closely, you can see the gun ejecting each time as he pulls the trigger there, and it appears she shot multiple times. Then he goes back over to the other girl that's already down, and he shoots her one more time. This is very disheartening to me. Especially the second girl that's in the background, the top of your screen there, she's already down. After being shot once, being attacked with the chair, or, you know, I don't want to say attacked. She is subdued because of what she is doing. She's down. She's not getting back up. She's not posing another threat. There was no need to go and shoot that girl again. I don't think that the girl that was down to begin with that went down, if you'll notice, and I'll back it up again so you can see what I'm speaking about here. When she's going back, he shoots her once, she hits the ground. If he had, even if he had shot a second time, I could understand. But then there goes another, 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 two more after that. It looks like six rounds from what I can tell was fired. There was no need. The moment she hit that ground, she's got a knife, he's got a gun. The girl could have been disarmed. What I'm trying to say 
the PLO is inciting young children to get involved in this. And as a result, because there's so much tension amongst the Jewish people, because they are being attacked, they are under a war situation. But we should not, as a Jewish people, we should not act like the savages that the Palestinian Liberation Organization is condoning and the violence that they're bringing out against the Jews. We should have a higher moral as the chosen people of God. We should have a higher moral ground than what they do. Not to mention, how do we know that maybe one day these girls don't, would have not have recognized their era and would have repented of their ways? You know, God says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And when you have a situation where one is down, and then to turn around, and he walks all the way back over and fires another round into this girl on the ground. There's no need in this. this and, then, and then the video is aired to the world. This is what the Palestinian Authority wants. Because why? The world is not looking at what the PLO and what the, the Palestinian terrorists are doing to the Jews. The world is ignoring the fact that they gun down and murder families in front of their children or that they attack them while they're walking in the streets of Jerusalem and just start stabbing their parents to death uh, and a child gets shot in the, in the old city there. They don't look at that. They're not looking at the Palestinian that, that gets brainwashed and straps on bombs and goes and blows itself up, blows a bus up, blows a pizzeria up like it happened back in the Second Intifada. They're not looking at the 21-year-old girl the other day that was stabbed to death. They're not looking at the girl that was stabbed this morning, left for dead. And the elderly that are stabbed by the men running down the streets and even, the, even children with knives, Palestinian. You know, Palestinian men, you should take a hold of that child and bring them down yourself. And by the way, these girls actually, their second victim was a Palestinian. Hadn't, they had no idea they're stabbing their own people. As the Jewish people, though, the discouraging part that I feel right now, and I, and I realize this is not in every case. Like I said, I showed you and I cited about the, the guard that had to do it because the guy that just ran, rammed everybody down with his car, then he gets out, he stabs several people. He killed, he killed like two or three people that day. And that just was a couple of weeks ago. You know, the security guard only shot him because he got up again and was trying to kept, kept trying to do it. That I understand. I understand the logic of what he did and what he had to do in order to protect other people from losing their lives. I understand that. And I know many other cases are like that. Just like the man that poses a news guy that goes out there and then the next thing you know, he's stabbing the, the soldier to death. I understand. But when you got kids involved and, you've, and they've gone down, you, you, have to, you have to think and remember that children still, they've been brainwashed, no doubt. And, and I can't say that they would repent. They may go on the rest of their life and hate Jews and, and every other kind of evil that they're doing. They may very well do that. But we don't know. We don't know. And this should be stopped. It, it, is, it is sad. As, as a Jewish people, as I said, as a chosen people of God, God is not pleased when we do something like this. So I, I encourage I, I, my passion, I feel for my people, what they're under. I know I was there during the first attack in the third intifada. I was actually there on the streets in Jerusalem with the first death. But we have to take a higher moral ground. How can we claim to be the true people of God? 
And I know believers in Yeshua, which I am a believer in Yeshua as well, would also agree with this. They would have to agree with this because they know that Yeshua never taught violence. He did. He taught mercy as well. I'm Stephen Benoon, and I and I, I'm you know I'm sorry, friends. I I love my people dearly. As I said, I am not for a two-state solution. I I am for one state. I am for those that want to live under uh, under the Israeli law. They can be they can assimilate in together as one nation under the police force that the Israelis have. There even the military in Israel is mixed, by the way, with both Arab and Jewish people. And they're able to do it without any issues. You know, and then the ones that want to be radical, okay, go live in Jordan then. Go live in Syria then. You know, go live in Lebanon if you want to be radical. But the Israeli state should just be one state. And, and, and I had a sister that commented on the post that I posted on Israeli News Live and, and Facebook. And she was right. She says to me, Brother Steve, if the, if the Israeli government would do more about this, then we wouldn't have this problem to begin with. I agree. I do agree. And security in Israel has, has totally, totally come completely out of control. I think also that the Israeli soldiers that, that are in uniform should be carrying arms regardless. I don't care if he's still in, in, in training. If he's got a, a uniform on, he should have some kind of an arm. Because more and more, we are seeing Palestinians resort to guns as well and shooting their victims, not just stabbing them. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.